Welcome to NEK VT Rocks. Um, my guest today is Tanya Sousa, and you are a writer, an artist, an Airbnb person, a chef, an all-round. You do everything. I love doing a lot of things. I would never, never, never be bored. That's true. Yeah. And a lot of people will know you from when you were a teacher. Well, I was a guidance counselor, and right. I was a teacher years and years ago, and then I was a guidance counselor for a number of years. And a journalist? And a journalist. I worked my way through college working for the Newport Daily Express. Whoa! Yes. So you went to college up here? I went to college at Johnson State College when it was Johnson State College, right. when it did have a writing program and all of these things. Wow. So through your evolution, mm -hmm. you're still on an evolving path, clearly. Yeah, there's no end to evolution, is there? I don't think so. I hope not. I, I'm totally with you there. Right, right, right. So hopefully I'm just going. But the reason we're doing this today is that you have another book. I do. I do. I write different kinds of books, but yes. uh, I have Rescued. That's my new children's picture book that came out on National Adopt a Pet Day. Well, that was good timing. Yeah. Adopt and a Shelter Pet Day, sorry. Shelter Pet. Yeah. And your book is about a shelter pet. It is. It's about Simba, who yeah. was um, our family dog, mm -hmm. and she was adopted as a puppy from a shelter in Massachusetts, actually, right before we moved up here. And she did something quite splendid, which made it possible for me to be sitting here today talking to you. <laughs> she saved your life. She is did. Really what it comes down she to. She really did. Yeah. 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 She was a wonderful dog. So. Um, I've been working on that story for years, trying to, it, you would think that writing a children's book is very easy, but no. it's almost harder yeah. um, because there are fewer words and you, you don't want to overtell and you need to think about the vocabulary. Right. Um, and it, I just had to get it right. And so it finally struck a place where it was right. And then you have to get the illustrations. Right. And I was lucky enough to pair up with Marcia Blanco who is uh, an amazing, actually a technical illustrator, but um, I saw different, different pieces of her work and I thought, this, this woman could do this and she did a beautiful job. So she's my co, really she's my, mm -hmm. my I don't you can't say co-author, but she, this would not exist without Marcia Blanco. Co-artist? Co-artist, yeah. I like that. That's a good yeah. way to say it. Has she done any of your other books? No, um, my other children's books were all done um, Amber Alexander from Middlesex, Vermont, uh -huh. did Ninny News Organic Farm. Monique Bonneau, who no longer is a Vermonter, uh, huh. did Fairy Feast. And Katie Flindahl has done two of my books. She's done Tossing Stars and Life is a Bowl of Cherry Pits, which actually yeah. I'm going to come out with a reprint of. Oh. Yeah. So there's probably a lot of people who are familiar with some of your work. I hope so. But, you know, I'm, I'm not famous. I know this. I don't want to be famous. That's fine. But <laughs> You if, would like to sell your books. <laughs> but I would like to make enough money. To, for ch I have a friend who said, I don't need to be rich, but I would like enough to pay my bills and a little left over for chocolate. And I think that's, I a, think that's really important. That's a really way, a good way to say it. Yeah. Just a little left over for something yes. valuable to you, important Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Yeah. And to know that there's that degree of security. Right. I think we all want that. Right. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be. I've been insecure. Right. I remember having to, um, you know, people often think that I've not gone without, uh, and that's not true. I, right. I remember having to burn pieces of old furniture in a very tough time in my life. Right. Um, when my loved one was very sick and couldn't work, and, um, and I was, I, I just was not earning enough as a young person person to right. pay everything and there was not money for oil. Burnt some furniture. You got, yeah, <laughs> you do what you have to do. Yeah, and yeah. and that, that, isn't that part of being a Vermonter? It's part of being human, I think, but yeah. especially, yeah, but Vermont definitely you have to be resourceful. Yes. So, and, and uh, whether it's getting some downed wood from beavers, you know, that they've cut down and then you take the rest, or if it's right. burning some furniture you know you're not going to use anyway, or whatever it takes. You do what you have to you do. You do what you have to do. Yeah, actually, that's a, maybe that's your next book. You do what you have to do. <laughs> you know, true. 
I, I, that, there are a lot of book ideas. I bet. Were, oh my gosh, I have a list of potential book titles, potential book ideas, and it's uh, it's not it's not finding things to write about. It's which one? Yeah. To write about first. So. Yeah, there's sort of something about that inner resilience and resourcefulness yes. that that a writer can do great things with. Yeah. Well, that's something. Thank you for the idea. I'll, <laughs> I'll keep you in mind when it comes to the royalty thank time. Thank you not for the idea. No, no, no. <laughs> that's fine. I don't mind. I'd rather have too many ideas than yeah. no ideas at all. Yeah. So. so how can people find out about Rescued and learn about Simba and learn about what happened? Because well, it's, it's an important lesson. Well, they can buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I have some events that are going to be going on all summer long, cool. some with Marsha Blanco, the illustrator, mm -hmm. which uh, is really special when she can be there too. But the next one's coming up um, Saturday, June 8th. I'm going to be at the MAC Yes. at 3 o'clock on uh, that Saturday. And then June Saturday, Saturday, June 22nd, I'm going to be at the Jones Memorial Library from 10 to 11. And June 28th um, at 10.30, which is a Friday, I'm going to be taking part in a large event that's the St. Johnsbury Athenaeum in tandem with Dog Mountain, So it's huh. going, which is wonderful because it's about a dog and it's four dogs and four dog lovers, and uh, it's going to be at Dog Mountain. So wow. they're going to have crafts and all sorts of things so for it's outdoors? kids to do. It will be outside. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the, I'm assuming if the weather is bad, they'll have some they sort have of They have the option B. of going in. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. So this is a whole dog-centered event. It is. That yeah, dogs really can cool. come. <laughs> yeah, dogs can come. Yeah. So, and they can also learn, um, if they want to get the book and they don't find it at the MAC, um, they can contact me. Um, mm -hmm. The the. Bed and Breakfast has a website which yeah. has a section called Tanya Studio, and it has links to any of the books that I've written cool. that are available for sale. So that's www.roseappleacresfarm.com. And speaking, and we'll come back to the book, because, sure. but that was just a perfect segue yeah. into Rose Apple Acres, mm -hmm. which is this absolutely spectacular mm -hmm. Airbnb, aka Thank your you. home. And you've been there. I have, you've had a which is to be why there. I feel like, oops, I just hit the microphone. <laughs> why, why I can say how amazing it is, mm. is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. What do you like about it? What do I like about it? Well, for me, of course, there was this wonderful brunch. Right. And, you know, you can always seduce me with food, good food. <laughs> yeah. And I, it really was good food. So putting McDonald's in front of you is not going to make you happy. I don't want to know, <laughs> but you know, homemade scones and clotted cream. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody really went to trouble to make that. It was it was fabulous. Oh, good! I'm glad you and enjoyed wonderful it. Wonderful quiche. So the f the food was wonderful. But what I also, if I was staying there for mm -hmm. an Airbnb, it was beautiful. It was calm. Mm -hmm. the The whole ambience was lovely. It would be a wonderful place to just go for a weekend, a oh. weekend away. Oh, it was lovely. thank you, thank you for saying that. And we, looking we're around to the it. walls, I mm -hmm. mean, the, there was family art. There were pieces that Courtney, your partner, has crafted. Yeah. As a blacksmith. Yeah. It was wow. Yeah. There's a lot. We both love art. Courtney and I are both artists and both love art. So he he has a lot of his beautiful work around and family treasures. And yeah. I've, he collected art, some art with through his family and I collected art on my own. Yeah. And we've been able to really blend our interests and our styles. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. And your whole garden area is beautifully creative too. Thank you. I mean, obviously, it hasn't really taken off yet because it's early in the year. Getting there. But it will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I have to come back and see the moss garden because yes. some of that moss was mine. It was. It was. Um, yeah, we have the Zen garden. We, we have uh, walking trails every yeah. year that you can go to different spots. We have a beaver pond with mm -hmm. a... Um, bench next to it and we're going to set up a picnic bench we have two beaver ponds actually there was a beaver pond and another pond now they are both beaver ponds because the beavers have claimed them and that's fine by us <laughs> um, but so there's a bench by one and then we want to put a picnic table by the other so people can you know safely and respectfully 
look watch over the, the watch the beavers do their thing um, and see the other wildlife that it draws and then we have the walking paths we're going to do a story walk not of rescued but of um, <laughs> life is a bowl of cherry pits yeah we have it all set to go but we haven't installed it yet we'll do some sort of event when it's installed yeah and of course the other wonderful thing about your airbnb is the critters both the ones <laughs> outside like the groundhog marching across yeah. and your cats yeah as a cat lover I mean, and, and po pogo and Pogo, yes. I can't forget Pogo, yeah, the dog. The little dog, yeah. Another dog. Yeah, yeah they are, um, we have <laughs> had visitors come stay who just, what they write in the review book is, you know, yeah, there was great breakfast, but it, and the animals. You know, <laughs> Cornelius was one of the cats. Um, and Sirius. Know, and Sirius, <laughs> right. But um, Cornelius. It's worth it for the names. <laughs> it, yeah, right, Cornelius, Sirius, um, Sidel, and Pogo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But Cornelius likes his belly rubbed. So we've had people just sit on the floor with Cornelius and rub his tummy <laughs> like a dog would, would yeah. take. And he doesn't claw. He just, he's like, yes, please, yes, rub my tummy. <laughs> a zen moment. Yes. And so they've written in, you know, Cornelius equals dog in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> so we love our animals. And we yeah. love people who love animals. Yeah. So. It's a really nice way of people being able to see what you've created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're doing events. Um, we're opening it now. Of course, our guests have breakfasts. Sure. But like you've seen, um, we're opening it to breakfasts or brunches once a month, and people can get in touch with us if they are interested in bringing a, a small party. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably up to up to eight. I think six is a good number, but yeah. up to eight, and um, and they can have brunch. We have had we've done that already for people. Mm -hmm. And then I'm starting something new, which is um, teas. So after, I love perennial pleasures in Hardwick, but it's a distance. Yes. So people who have, you know, like a, a tea, I'm starting, I, the first one we're having is the spring flowers tea, where I'm making scones with dandelion petals and lilac petals. So they're dandelion scones and lilac scones and um, real clotted cream, English <laughs> clotted cream, and jams, mm -hmm. and also dandelion and lilac in some crepes. Mm. So with a, with a very light um, uh -huh. cream cheese and honey stuffing, uh, mm -hmm. as I can tell I like food. And obviously English, Irish style teas. And, and well, and tea or coffee. Yeah. People can end some lilac lemonade. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first one, and then we'll have one a season. So there'll be a summer tea mm. and a fall tea and a winter tea using different ingredients that are seasonally appropriate from our gardens, huh. mostly Can from our gardens. People book you for an event if they wanted a small party for something. Maybe someday. Hmm. I, I, I mean, if somebody wanted to contact us and ask us, if it, depending on, you know, it would have, yeah. depends on the size, but um, we certainly, we, we held my mother-in-law's um, memorial event there, mm -hmm. and that went very well. Um, so I'm thinking a small birthday party. For oh, right. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. That. Right. Yeah. yeah, that would be lovely. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we don't go over for f serving food outside of the the B&B, &B, <laughs> um, we can only serve by law once a month. <laughs> so as long as we do something once a mm -hmm. month, and that's fine. If somebody wants to check with us, if we haven't yeah. signed a party up for a brunch, we could, we could definitely consider that. Huh. Yeah. Regulations. Some well, of them make good. sense, some of them don't. Well, <laughs> at least they let you. Yeah. Uh, they give you the wiggle room to not have a restaurant license. Right. When we've been inspected, of course, being a, B, a real B&B &B too. Mm -hmm. um, but so you're a real B&B, &B, not just an Airbnb. Right. We are an, a B&B &B yeah. that also is connected through Airbnb. And honestly, that's where right. we get a, a lion's share of our customers. They're very surprised often when we offer a full breakfast. Right. But we are a B&B. &B. Right. Because yeah. the hoops, that the real B&Bs have to jump through are mm -hmm. so much more stringent. Right. Yeah, we had to be inspected and yeah. have our water tested and, um, and all of that good stuff, which is good. I'm yes. all for it. I want to be safe. You know, right. want to make sure for you, people for are yourselves safe. as well as for right. anybody else. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, what's the long-term vision? The long-term vision. Well, there's only so long-term I dare envision, <laughs> because you never know what life throws at you. Well, that's true. That's not a reason not to have a vision. Though. Right. But um, that's oh, what got you here. <laughs> right. Well, workshops. Yeah. So I'm, I've started um, offering writing workshops. Courtney is readying his shop. Mm -hmm. so that in the future he can or offer blacksmith mm -hmm. experiential stays and workshops in his shop. So he already teaches at the Old Stone House and he right. wouldn't compete with that. 
but he would offer additional ones or if somebody wants to come up for a, a long weekend and uh, learn from him, they can do that. The shop's not quite ready, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. So that's a vision. And I just see, I, I just see more events for fun. Like, you know what I want to do? I want to have a pun, a punny weekend. I want to have an event where people come, because I love puns, I'm mm -hmm. a punster. They come and maybe there's, um, there are different pun situations set up around the property mm -hmm. and people have to go sort of on a pun scavenger hunt. <laughs> and the people who recognize the most puns, and I, I, unfortunately uh -huh. I can't think of something off the top of my right. head, but I've thought of it before. Mm -hmm. And they maybe win a prize or something. They get, they get uh, some sort of reward. That would be fun. Wouldn't I'm, that be fun? I would bet there's a lot of punsters around here. Well, w and there are. Yeah. There, there definitely are. And puns are endless. And um, one of our guests that we knew, a couple was coming, and we knew them through Facebook. We never met them mm. in person. They came from Canada. And we knew that they had quite a sense of humor. So I put the little, little beetle car in the bed. <laughs> so when he undid the bed, when they uh -huh. undid the bed at the end of the night, they found this beetle in there. And in the morning he said, what was with, what was with the, the little car in the bed? And I looked at Courtney and I said, oh no, Courtney, we have bed bugs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but really bad. But see, you that know, was that, fun. that was fun. <laughs> and then he laughed and laughed and then yeah. he realized what it was all about. But. <laughs> You can't do that with everybody. No, no. you can't. But no. a lot of people, you can. Right. And a lot of people love it. They groan every time, but it's so much fun. Right. So, so that's, you know, things like that. Playful. Yeah. We did a creep walk a couple of um, years ago on, on Halloween. Like mm -hmm. we, we did two weekends and it was well attended. And I people bet. had a blast. We had a blast. We didn't do it last week because the weather was so bizarre. We didn't know what was going to happen. So we didn't set up for that. But, um, you know, just whatever whim, whatever bring, awakens the child, whatever awakens the artist, mm -hmm. whatever um, just gives people something light and fun. Yeah. Yeah, and beautiful sometimes. Yeah, and then in that gorgeous setting. Right, which and it is. Oh. In reality, is so close to Newport. Oh, yeah. It's but not even quite in, 20 minutes, I think. Right, you could be so many miles away. Right. And we're close to Jay Peak. Right. And we're not terribly far. I mean, some people go to Westmore to Willoughby Lake mm -hmm. and stay with us. Um, and then, there, of course, the Long Trail is right there. Right. And uh, walking the Jay Recreational Trails, the Newport uh, Bike Trail, mm -hmm. and I'm from Agog. So there are yeah. all sorts of things to do around here. But yeah, we're really lucky living here. Mm -hmm. How much and how much we just take for granted. Well, yeah. I've, a lot of times people would say, oh, you know, there's nothing to do here. I know. I love and every I do time laugh. I hear it. Is it that's really? Abs yeah, that's absurd because you can do anything and it's, a lot of it's free. Yes. But you have to be willing to open your eyes and be willing to do it, the thing, right. you know. I mean, but there are a ton of things in, out in nature and there are shops and there are galleries mm -hmm. and there are, you know, events that go on. Right. I mean, yeah. I don't understand it. And the gallery you're going to be reading in very soon right. is, is a lovely gallery that oh, apparently yes. some people still haven't discovered. I know. Hopefully pe more people, <coughs> people will come and, mm -hmm. and um, look around. If they come to the reading, they'll be able right. and they've never been there before. Hopefully they'll look around. I presume you're reading in the downstairs gallery, yes. which is a nice space. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful space and a, uh, I love it there. Are you taking Pogo with you? No, Pogo is not. I had a dog that I used to use as a reading dog, a, yeah. a, a, and he liked to be around people for sure. for a time. He was he was a showman. Yeah, Pogo gets overwhelmed, so she's she's good with small groups to say yeah. hello. She'll greet everybody, and then, she's and then gone. she goes away and lies down. Um, she would not be happy, and I always think about the dog first. Yeah, so absolutely. I think they'd love it if I brought Pogo and um, maybe you could bring Cornelius. <laughs> Cornelius, yes. If he would be, I've never taken him out of the house. If he would be as calm out of the house with me as he is in the house, he would be divine. I used to take divine. one of my cats to a nursing home. Oh, really? Yeah, she was, she loved it. Yeah. And she didn't mind how many people picked her up, yeah. held her, oh, perfect. talked to her, she'd sit on the beds. Oh. So there which some cat, cats that... Which kitty was that? It was one called Phoebe, who mm -hmm. is now long gone. Yeah. But 
she was really into it. Yeah. She was just very gentle. Yeah. Very receptive and very giving in that way. Right. My other cats would shred somebody, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe never did. Right. And Cornelius, I don't think, would shred anybody or yeah. anything like He's very gentle. Yeah. But, um, but if he was afraid, he might try to run away. Yeah. Not, you know, I, I, I could try him somewhere with somebody I know, like in a home, yeah. to see how he does. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah. And Phoebe loved it, and she didn't even mind getting in the carrier, yeah. going to the place. Yeah. But she's the only one of my cats that probably would have done that. How did you ever discover that she didn't mind that? I took her to see somebody mm -hmm. once, and then it was, hey, I think she'd be good going into this nursing home. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So we tried it with a small group, and right. it worked. And she went back once a month for quite yeah. a while. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I hope you have pictures of that. No. No. <laughs> I don't document anything. <laughs> oh, well, except you're swimming. Well, or somebody but, does. But I don't document that. Right. Somebody else does. It's right. not me. Right. <laughs> and it's really only over the last few years that cell phone cameras are everywhere. Right. I mean, before you had to take a camera. Right. And what a pain in the neck. Then develop was. the film, even. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one of my family members, I was at a graduation this weekend, and uh, he was, they, they were talking about microfiche. Oh, and yes. then they got onto cameras, and the, one of them said, <clears throat> and he's uh, in mid-20s, I guess, and he said, well, you know, they had these cameras where, you know, you had to, they were in this <laughs> little box, and you had to take it to somewhere and have it actually like have them yeah. do something with it and, and i thought wow was it that long ago that this young man couldn't didn't understand a film in, role it wasn't in his experience no it wasn't at all no. and there's there was an article in the paper recently that they were talking about the antique store in newport mm -hmm. and um and the the very nice young woman who was a parent i'm saying young woman i'm assuming who yeah. wrote it said they even have mini vinyl records lined up on a shelf in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed 45 40 <laughs> times. And, but she only, she saw them and they were mini vinyl records to yeah. her. She didn't know they were what, she didn't, it wasn't in her experience either. And a flip side, not and just the B, not right, just the A side. Right. <laughs> so it's very interesting how yeah. different. Don't you feel old? <laughs> I don't feel old, but it makes me think, oh, they're just too young. They're, yeah. I'm not too old. They're too young. They're too young. Yes. Yeah, they, they needed, they didn't grow up in a cool time. But. Yes, we kidding. have a landline because obviously service up here is, tends to be limited. Right. But I've said, I need to switch to another phone. I'll go get the phone I can walk with. And they right. say, what are you talking to me on? Well, it's a landline. It's tethered to the wall, you know. Yeah. It's what we have. And you can hear this silence. Right. They can't imagine. Right. Sometimes I refuse to give out my cell phone because I use it. I don't use it as a phone unless it's for emergencies. Right. I hate it. So I use it all the time for internet. Yes. Um, or to, you know, I don't text much either. Right. But um, yeah, and we still have a landline as well. Right. We're a part of a good club then. It's partly because we don't get the calls in our homes. Right. <laughs> so yeah. it's useless me giving out my cell phone number. Right, exactly. Because I'm not going to get your call. Right. I may get it three days later if I exactly. go somewhere where there's service. Right. But I don't get it otherwise. Right. And I don't want it stuck to me. Oh, no. I mean, the phone is a tool. To me, the phone should not be your master. Right. It's a tool, and I think with cell phones, what's happened is it's become your master, people's masters, instead of their tool. Right. And I refuse to be uh, have anything right. be my master. I don't mm -hmm. know if there's something that would be my master that I would accept, but not a phone, no. not technology. Which takes us right back to the actual pleasure of having a book in your hand. Yes. There is nothing like a book. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Especially for little ones. Yeah. I think they need that tactile. Yes. And when you're sitting with your little one yeah. and you're, they're on your lap and you've got the book open and you're turning yeah. the pages. And or so they're learning to turn the pages yeah, themselves. Right. Yeah. Right. And they're looking at the pictures and talking about the pictures. Right. right. The 
Dolly Parton oh, yeah. book. I can't remember what it's called. There's, there's a program. Right. I know of it. I can't think of the name Your right now. Your book should either. be connected to that. They can't be. Somebody else mentioned that, and Why? I looked into it because they only use books from, I think it's Macmillan House or oh. something. There's one big publishing company that she works with. Sure. And, um, I get that. Yeah, and, and they don't take anybody else's books. They don't look at huh. them. So uh, you can't even send a copy and have it considered, unfortunately, because I did look into that. Maybe we should have a local version of well, book there, club with local right. if, and that's, books. If somebody wanted to take that on. Making and, access available. Right. Yeah. Um, there it was something that I was part of with uh, a, a dear friend of mine years ago. We got connected with... Uh, what was it called? Oh no. Op oh, Operation Outreach, maybe. Hmm. Um, anyway, but it was it, it was a program not from Vermont, but that they people you could sign up and donors covered books and kids got these books mm -hmm. that had to do with developing empathy for all living things, which of course is my bag. Right. So um, some of my books ended up because of my my friend who. Ha, um, was very generous, um, made sure that, that some of my other picture books were part of that program. So there were kids in the area hmm. who received copies of my books for some couple of few years, I think it was. And, um, and that was lovely. It would be nice to restart that program. I know, and I don't know who, I've got to look that up. I don't know if they're still in business or how, I'd have to look that up. Yeah. But it would be nice to, to like you said, to do a localized version yeah. of it. Um, but you need donors. You, you need, do. You need some. You know, usually there's, uh, there, you know, there's quite a bit of money that goes into that because it's not cheap but to print no, those. I know. Unfortunately, but there might be ways of doing that, and you would think there would be enough bibliophiles mm -hmm. up here who would be really interested yeah. in something like that. Maybe that's part of a long-term vision. Yeah. Yeah. Making books like yours accessible to little kids. Right. Because for a little kid, having your own book that you can put your hands oh, on yeah. and all right so it gets dirty it gets damaged but you loved it it's okay mm -hmm, exactly oh there was a, a when fairy feast came out there yeah. was she's in high school now i think but there was a, a young a little red-headed girl mm -hmm. who bought fairy feast and was passionate about it and her mother i didn't know her she bought it i don't know where she bought it but her mother contacted me one day and said you know, this is who I am. This is my daughter. Here's a picture of her with Fairy Feast. And she was asleep. Like, she wouldn't let the book go. <laughs> Sleeping with the book. And she said, a mean boy in her class grabbed the book and tore it. Oh. And I was wondering, because they didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. And she said, is there any chance I could get a, another copy? And so, of course. And I wrote her a letter and um, sent her a new book. Uh -huh. And then we got to meet in person one day. And, oh, it was wonderful. And now she's a beautiful young lady. And uh, whatever part my book played in that, even if mm -hmm. it was this big, you know, helping her grow into an empathetic, fun-loving Right. And girl. that's such an important skill. Mm. So books are good. How are we doing on time? We're doing fine. Good. Uh, okay. Well, actually, we're, we're sort of getting to the end of time. But okay. We're the doing end fine. of time. The end of our time. Of our for time. this format. Okay, I'm glad but that it's not the end of all formats. time. Because I'm not ready. We have things to do. Too many things to do. What is, what, quickly, what's, what are your, well, not quickly, as slow as you'd like. <laughs> what do you? What oh, who's you? interviewing who here? <laughs> well, I think it's only fair to turn the tables once oh. in a while. What do you have in your forecast? My forecast for the future? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, every time I do these shows, it mm -hmm. sort of gets really exciting mm -hmm. because just like the, wow, what about books for little children? Right. And why can't we do it with local authors? Right. Which, of course, we can. Right. And the, I don't usually do two interviews in a day, but today I just mm -hmm. did one with the sailing club. Oh, wow. And it's, oh, that. Because being on the water is such an important part of my life. Right. Being on it and in it. Right. That it's, you know, how can we make this even more available? And, mm. and how can those of us who live here get involved in this project? Well, very nice. So you have your fingers in every pie anyway. So many. But that's because of meeting so many people in this format. Mm. Is You get to know what's out there and what's so exciting. And that's how I know there's so much happening in Newport. Exactly. And 
Newport area. It's not just Newport. Right, right, right. The greater about. Newport area. Yeah. Right. The Very well Northeast said. Northeast Kingdom. I mean, there's so much. It's I would never want to live anywhere else, I'll tell you that. I agree. I like to travel places and visit, yes. and then I come home and I say, that was beautiful, or that was interesting, or that was nice, but yes, home. Mm -hmm. There's something about this place, it's magic. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty accessible. I think so. If you've got wheels. Right, and I, and I understand there's the underbelly of people, yeah. uh, you know, I understand that there's um, being at, at one point, like I said, when I was at a, I, I know what poverty feels like right. in there, um, but there are also services and there are the free, many, many, many free things to do so people can enrich their lives in all sorts mm -hmm. of ways. Um, and that's another thing. Ha having people, you know, feeding their souls and not just their bodies. Right. We, we have food shelves and we have... Um, all sorts of sorts of assistance mm -hmm. probably not enough ever but we right. do and what about connecting people with things that uh, feed their souls right yeah like like you know there, there are lots of making them aware of all this free stuff that they could go do that they can mm -hmm. partake in these art art um, right. events um, because I don't know. I think that elevates all of us. It does. And having places where we can connect. And connect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the things are fine, but it's the connection that's so important. Absolutely. And that's, again, coming back to books, that's what books do. Right. They give a connection. Right. Music does as well. Mm -hmm. And art. Right. So when right. The schools are being pushed into only following a curriculum. I know. It makes me crazy because I want to say no. <laughs> right. You've got to feed all of a child. You want, you want somebody to graduate as a person, a right. full person, right. not just stuck in one aspect. Couldn't agree more. Well, on that note of yes. perfect agreement, <laughs> <laughs> one last time, where are you going to be reading? Okay, I'm going to be reading um, on Saturday, June 8th at 3 o'clock at the MAC. Cool. I'm going to be um, reading, and that's, yeah, 3 o'clock. I said 3 o'clock. Saturday, June 22nd, 10 to 11 at the Jones Memorial Library in Orleans. Mm -hmm. And June 28th at 10.30, I will be at the, Saint, uh, at the Dog Mountain, mm -hmm. which is a joint St. J. Athenaeum Dog Mountain event. And people can take their dogs there, too. They can. Oh, and I forgot to mention the Rand, the Rand Memorial Library July 25th and 26th, I'm part of their summer program. Where is the Rand? It, that is in North Troy. Oh, it yeah. Is I for, always really it's called the a, Rand. a little gem people just don't know yeah. about. That I just, I, I was astounded when I met with her, the librarian and found yeah. out the things. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I could go on and on. Yeah. But I lose it when I hear the different names. I know. As opposed to just the library. Right. The library in North Troy. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Right. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. It's been it a pleasure. Fun. And see you around. I'll probably see you at Mac. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you.